G'day guys, Steve with Broken Sprocket. In this video, I'm going to be doing an engine service on my N70 Hilux. That's the 1KD engine. Well, let's get started. Just a disclaimer before we do get started, I actually wasn't going to put this video up because I had a pretty average day on the tools and made a heap of mess all over my car. But I thought, hey, everybody can relate to a bad day on the tools and also the information is still relevant and correct. So let's get started. Okay, this is a simple engine service on my Toyota Hilux. I will be changing the oil filter, fuel filter, air filter, and also replacing it with some new oil. Okay, first thing to do, we need a drain pan to catch the old oil. We need to remove the old oil by removing the sump plug, which is underneath the sump, obviously. Undo the sump plug, let the oil drain in, and we leave it at that. Okay, while that oil's draining, we come back up to the top half of this engine, and I'm going to replace the oil filter. Okay, the oil filter for this vehicle is situated right here. We can simply just unscrew it. Sometimes you can get them by hand, but I've always found in the past it's a bit hard by hand, so I've got a special tool that I like to take it off with, which makes life a little bit easier. Okay, I've got the new oil filter right here. And you'll see on the top of the oil filter, it's got these ridges on it. And it's like a huge socket that I have here. And that can just clip straight in onto there. You give it a bit of a tap and it'll go on. A couple of extension bars that come out. And that gives me enough room to twist that off without breaking my hand or something like that. Or if it's really tight, you can't get at it. And that's how I take the oil filter off on this vehicle. Okay, here's the tool. A couple of extension bars. Find where it wants to go on. Give it a tap with a rubber mallet. Once it's nice and loose, you can take all this off and just unwind it by hand. Normally get a bit of oil spilling all over the show. That's not uncommon. Clean rag. Wipe out any excess oil. The oil ring has come off that one, so remember to take that out. Okay, with this area cleaned up pretty good, it's ready to install the new filter. Okay, the new filter will have a rubber O-ring around here. You need to put a little bit of clean oil on your finger and just run around the surface of that O-ring. With the oil on that O-ring, we we'll simply just put it back in place, screw it down nice and snug, but don't over tighten it. And only ever tighten it as much as your hands can tighten it. You don't want a tool to tighten it like we take it off. You just put it in like this, and then tighten it up with your fingers. Okay, back under the vehicle now. I've got the old sump plug here. Give it a good clean up with a nice clean rag. Make sure there's no contaminants on it, so it'll get the best seal. Also check the seal to make sure it's in good condition. This one here is still good. So get back under the vehicle and tighten that back up. All right, you can see that the oil has stopped draining now and we can easily just put that sump plug back in place and tighten it up. I normally do get a little bit of oil and stuff like that dripping all over when I do this. It doesn't bother me overly much because when I finish here, I'm gonna degrease the whole engine bay down Okay, now with the new oil filter in place and the sump plug back installed, it's time to replace with some new oil. Okay, the new oil will go in this top section of engine where it says engine oil. Take the cap off and the oil will go inside here. Now you check your engine oil level with the dipstick. So the dipstick will have a gauge on it, full a full, a minimum and full range, and you want to get it to the full range. 
Ah, oh, you bastard. Bloody funnel doesn't sit in too crash hot. Always moves. This is why I always end up degreasing my engine when I finish, because I end up with crap everywhere. Now to check the level of oil, give the dipstick a good clean so that you can see where the level will be sitting. Push it all the way in. And it's not even registering yet, so I just need a lot more to go in. With a bit of luck, I'll actually get some oil in the engine because most of it's over the top of the engine. Okay, we're starting to register now. Still needs a bit more. Okay, pretty much sitting smack on where we want it to be, so that's enough oil. Okay, the oil cap's been reinstalled. Got oil all over the place. I'm not normally this bad at it, but it must be because the camera's on, I'm making all the mistakes. Okay, next on my list is the fuel filter. It goes right into this here. All right, I normally just disconnect this wire. This here needs to turn to release the top of the cap. It's easy like that. Give it a bit of a wobble, take it out. And this here is the fuel filter. This fuel filter has done 10,000 kilometers. In fact, that's what this whole engine has done between services. You can see it's fairly dirty-ish, but not terrible but obviously needs replacing. Inside the canister you can see lots of diesel. There's also a drain just down here. I don't know if you can see that right there. You unscrew this and you can either make a lot of mess or hook a hose up to it, and, but I've already got a lot of mess and I'm gonna clean it anyway. So I just normally unscrew that, let all the diesel flow out to clean up any gunk that is inside this canister. All right, so I just unscrew this here. Diesel's gonna fly everywhere, but I've already got plenty of mess, so let it go. Boom. You see it all drained out of there. Now I can check inside that canister for any filth or dirt. This one looks pretty good. Okay, so there's not much rubbish or anything like that inside this canister, but I do wanna give it a little bit of a flush out whilst that plugs out. How I do that is with some fresh diesel. Fresh diesel comes out of this pump. See? So just put it back on just a little bit, give it a bit of a pump. You'll see that new diesel's coming out of that hole down the bottom there. And that just cleans out that canister a bit. That's how I like to do it anyway. And now I know that canister is nice and clean. Okay, the new filter comes with three O-rings. One O-ring goes around this canister, simply give it a bit of a pinch, take that one off, replace it with the new one. There we go, that one's done. Now I've got the new filter, this O-ring goes on top, so it goes in like it's like a, a bit of a taper, it goes in like this. Squeeze it on, make sure it's in pro properly. So that's in, all the way around, nice and snug. And the, uh, the other smaller O-ring goes around the outer edge of the filter here like this. Okay, my fingers are already got lots of diesel and stuff on them, so give it a little bit of an oil up with your oily fingers. And put the filter back into the top section of this canister, like that. And then back in. The canister make sure you got it in the correct location you'll feel it click and then you can tighten up this this big nut section just do it by hand and you'll feel it click when it's in place and that's done reconnect this wire up start pumping the fuel back into the canister oops got to put that back on there we go, I forgot this piece. That needs to go back on, the fuel was just flying straight back out. So it gets a little bit of an extra clean in that canister. Put this back in, that's up snug. Now pump it up and fill the canister up. Man, I'm having a bit of a shocker today. Must be because the camera's on. Keep forgetting different things. 
Now once this pump starts to get firm, that's it, the pressure's in and the fuel is back into the canister. Okay, we move on to the air filter. Surely I can't get this wrong and get stuff everywhere like I have done so far. This is an easy and simple job with no mess. Okay, on top of the air filter we've just got these clips that come off like so. And there's one down the back section here. And there we go, and then this lid should just pop clean off. Here's the air filter. Done a few dirty roads on this one, but you can see the top seal is still very clean. So that top seal's clean, that's the bit that seals up on it. But you can see the dust has accumulated on here. And that's pretty good. So new one goes in because I've done a fair few dirt roads since I last changed this one, so it needs to be replaced. Also on the inside of the air box, it's a little bit of rubbish and stuff like that. That doesn't matter too much. The inside section, this pipe here is where the air goes in and give that a little bit of a run with your finger and check if there's if there's dusting. It means it didn't seal, this one's good. And also in the bottom corner here, just check the leaves and debris and there's a bit of leaves and debris in there because that there's your drain for water. So that needs to be cleared and cleaned so that water can exit if it, water is to come in. All right, got the new air filter here does have some grease that comes with it just in this little sachet tear it open a little bit take it out and just smear it along this top edge it doesn't need to be real thick just a little bit and it just helps it seal so tear it, put a little bit there like this and that'll help it seal on the top of the air box open the air box back up this goes into here like this and seals up. Alright, get that box on tight like this and reinstall your clips. Okay, that's pretty much it for a engine service on this vehicle. It's got new oil, new filters throughout, new fuel filter, new air filter. Now, I also like to just check my radiator fluids while I'm here. I top up the washer bottle for the washer jets on the windscreen and I go about checking radiator hoses and the heater hoses for, to make sure they're nice and firm and not fraying in any way. I check the belts to make sure that they're in good condition. And that's pretty much all I do uh, for my engine servicing. And this engine has 430,000 kilometers on it. And I've done every engine service on this vehicle uh, since I've owned it, which was at 160,000 kilometers when I purchased it. So I've done an awful lot of them. Now I do this every 10,000 kilometers and it's, it just works out just spot on and that's what Toyota recommend every 10,000 kilometers on this particular vehicle Now because I've made a hell of a mess everywhere. It's not normally this bad But you get to see the worst of it warts and all I'm not covering up nothing. I had a bad day um, I'm gonna give the engine a good degrees down Which is what I do after every service and then that normally keeps it all pretty good for the next 10,000 kilometers So thanks for watching